got some goldenrod, we got some brambles, we got some baby poplar. Human disturbance can actually increase ecosystem health rapidly. If we just left this landscape alone, it would be healing and producing biomass and biodiversity a lot more slowly than if we worked with it intensively. So there's a really interesting piece of news there, right? That humans can actually do good. This is what I call a water table pond. It actually sinks down towards the dry season. It was right before we got uh, Tropical Storm Irene. Four inches of rain that we, that we got on the landscape that feeds into this pond, which is all of everything above here, above this elevation, plus about 10 to 15 acres off the property is captured by swales and is directed into ponds and paddies and then into this pond eventually. So the first four inches of the six inch rain event on those 15 acres never made it to the river. Right, so it's just shock absorbed. We want to model our, our, our farm ecosystems essentially on wetlands. But for the most part, we can't grow a lot of food in fully saturated conditions. So that's where swales come in. Right? You can have wetlands in between swales and grow on the high points and the plants have access to all that water but they're not inundated. There's the ecosystems that we can promote that can deal with the pulses, with the challenges that are thrown at us, the pulses of drought and the pulses of flood essentially. We can deal with those by creating systems that are water-based but we also have to figure out how to grow in those systems and that's the challenge. If you dug a hole right here, it would just be filled with water. We're right on the water table. We're floating. This land is floating on water. Now that's a good thing, but only if we get above the water table. We know black locust doesn't like wetlands. It can't live in a wetland, but it's thriving here, right? So what's going on? It's on the mound, right? It just can't be inundated. So here's the size of the tree when you plant them. So this stuck in the ground like that, two years ago. That's due to the tree and the conditions that we created in which to plant the tree. It's uh, about an 80 foot hazelnut hedge and they're ready to harvest. This is what hazelnuts look like at harvest time. It's a really good timing that you guys are here. This site was pretty bare, had a lot of exposed soil and like some really um, sporadic club mosses growing up. All the water that's falling on this slope was doing what? Run off, just going straight downhill. So came in with a small little backhoe tractor that I owned and dug these swales. Cut here, put the material here. Cut, fill, cut, fill. Starting at the top, working downhill. And then planting these nitrogen fixing sea berries. I did that in spring. That year, this produced enough grass to graze it twice and scythe it once. So it produced more biomass in one season than it had, many times more biomass in one season than it had in 10 seasons. As permaculturists, we're trying to practice deliberate disturbance by bringing in specific species to the niches that are open by those disturbances. So this is ecosystem restoration actually happening. That's really the model for what we're doing here. We see that's definitely working and we're trying to figure out, okay, how to do that, how to promote that ecosystem development everywhere on the land in different areas. Whether it's really droughty or where it's really wet, like we started off. 